On behalf of the Ellington Public Schools, I would like to welcome you and your child to kindergarten. I emphasize you and your child because we recognize that you, as the parent, are your child's first, foremost, and most influential teacher. Kindergarten is an exciting life event, and if we work as partners together, we can help to make school a successful and rewarding experience. We recognize that this moment can hold some trepidation coupled with excitement. To further help eliminate any anxiety about this life event, it is recommended that you prepare your child for that thrilling first day of school by visiting the elementary school ahead of time, talking to your child about what to expect in school, reading books about going to school, and finally making sure that your child is on a school schedule with an earlier bedtime and ready to learn, because we are ready to teach. This video was developed to help provide an introduction to skills that will help prepare your child for the skills needed for the kindergarten curriculum. The video is organized into the following topics, self-help and independence, behavior and social skills, speech and language, vocabulary and concepts, early literacy, phonemic awareness, the writing process, early numeracy, concerns, and following will be comments from Dr. Scott Nickel, Superintendent of Schools. The video has been designed to allow you to view or review the topics of interest to you. I hope that many of your questions will be addressed, but please do not hesitate to contact your child's elementary school at any time if you have additional questions. Before coming to kindergarten, it is helpful for your child to develop some independence. In a kindergarten classroom setting, children are expected to be independent with self-help skills. Listening and following directions are important early learning skills needed to be a successful learner. Children should be able to dress themselves. Things like putting on his own shoes, doing his own zippers and buttons. Encourage your child to dress himself and praise attempts. Allow your child time to try. Don't be in such a rush to do it for him. Work with your child to practice doing buttons, zippers, and snaps. When your child is ready to teach him, tie his shoes. Have your child practice packing his own backpack and putting it on. Let your child feel some sense of accomplishment and pride in doing things for himself. Children should be able to care for their own personal hygiene needs. Children should know bathroom skills like toileting and washing their hands. Have your child try to blow his own nose and wash his own hands. Children should be able to eat and drink independently. Encourage your child to open his own food packages and clean up after himself after a snack or meal. Eventually, with patience and practice, your child will begin to automatically do some of the things for himself. Feeling a sense of independence will begin to build confidence. Your child will not be afraid to try new things. He will approach new tasks with an I can attitude. Listening skills can help build a foundation to get your child ready to learn. Children can learn by listening to their parents, other children, and other adults. Encourage your child to give eye contact when you are speaking to her. When you give a simple direction, encourage your child to follow the direction the first, at the first request. Praise your child for good listening. Try some multi-step directions to help your child's listening skills to grow. Try using two or three step directions like Put your plate in the sink and throw away your napkin. Make it playful. Try games like I Spy. Kids have to listen to clues to be able to guess the object. Listen and follow along to stories on CD. You can help your child establish good listening skills by having your child attend activities like story time at the library, dance classes, or sports where she has to listen and take directions from another adult. Listening to another adult gets children accustomed to taking directions from someone other than a parent or immediate caregiver. Encourage your child to play with other children. 
They need to learn to listen to one another. This will promote problem solving, conflict resolution, cooperation, and an understanding of others' feelings. Playgroups, playdates, and early learning centers offer many opportunities for children to learn through play. Listening and independence are just two areas to help your child to grow to become a successful learner. Set reasonable goals for your child. Remember it takes time to build skills. Seek ways to make learning fun and enjoyable. Encourage your child every day and celebrate small steps along the way. Play together, laugh together, and have fun with your child on the path to becoming a successful lifelong learner. Getting your child emotionally ready for kindergarten is very important. School-aged children should begin to be able to state basic feelings such as happy, sad, scared, and mad. They should also begin to talk about why they are feeling certain ways. The Berenstein Bear books demonstrate many good examples to help start this conversation with your child. Knowing the basics of right and wrong, understanding that no means no and yes means yes, sharing with others, and having to wait for attention will help them understand the demands of school. Help your child develop coping skills by allowing them to solve their problems on their own. Asking them, what do you think we should do? Or, how can we fix this? Will help them become independent problem solvers, increase their frustration tolerance, and develop a sense of accomplishment. It is also important to get yourself as a parent ready. As exciting and as difficult as the first days of school are, your child learns emotions from watching you. Modeling excitement about school will help your child be excited about school. Practicing separations will help your child develop independence and self-reliance. Creating a routine for separation will also help them separate smoothly. For example, you might end with one kiss and one big hug and then head out. Children typically have more difficulty separating if parents linger, attempt to reason with their child, or if the parent themselves becomes upset. Develop routines at home that so that positive habits are established early. Consistent bedtimes and homework routines will help build the foundation for a long-term success. For more information about developing emotional strength in your child, the National Association of School Psychologists has partnered with Pepperidge Farm and has prepared a website that provides parents with fun and easy activities to develop resiliency, positive frustration, positivity, and creativity. Here's a link to this information. Language refers to the content of what is spoken, written, read, or understood. There are many language milestones that a child of five has met by the time they enter kindergarten. Typically, five-year-old children are speaking in sentences of five to eight words. These phrases and sentences may still have some grammatical structures which are developing. For example, pronouns are not always used correctly. He might say her for she. Children of this age are able to discuss emotions and feelings and are able to tell a story. However, these stories may not have a central theme. Five-year-olds are able to comprehend approximately 2,800 words and can answer basic who and why questions. For example, who delivers the mail or who are you playing with? And what color is a stop sign? Have discussions and conversations with your child, modeling good grammar and sentences. Speech refers to the sounds that come out of our mouths and take shape in the form of words. Many things must happen in order for us to speak. For most children, these processes happen naturally. A five-year-old may mispronounce S, R, T, H, L, V, the SH sound, the CH sound, and the J sound, as well as blends, such as S, L. They are beginning to refine their speech pronunciation at this age. During the course of a day, your child may produce a word incorrectly. It is not always necessary to ask that the word be repeated. Instead, provide your child with the correct model. It is helpful to exaggerate the error sound correctly when you are providing the model. For example, when your child says poon for spoon, you would say, yes, you need a spoon. Providing your child with a good model is sometimes all you need to do. Be a good model let your child know that you think talking is fun. Vocabulary development is another area which is rapidly developing in your kindergarten aged child. 
Vocabulary represents the bank of words we use and whose meanings we understand. It is one of the most visible aspects of language acquisition in children. Did you know that a two-year-old has about a 300-word vocabulary, a three-year-old has a vocabulary of nearly a thousand words, and a five-year-old has a vocabulary of about 2,000 words? Word knowledge is closely related to overall language development, reading proficiency, and academic achievement. Some suggestions and activities that you may do at home with your kindergarten age child that will help with overall development are reading storybooks or fiction aloud and having an oral discussion is a key method for stimulating vocabulary growth. Be redundant. Some children will learn new words after one or two exposures to it. Others may need more exposure to be successful. Highly verbal homes, hearing many words every day is also very important. Have discussions and conversations. Point out things that are the same or different. Play games incorporating these concepts that he or she will encounter later in the classroom. Expand on your child's comprehension and expressive language skills by playing I spy. I spy something round on the wall that you use to tell time. After your child guesses what you have described, have him or her give you clues about something that he or she sees. Talk about spatial relationships, first, middle, last, and right and left, or opposites, up and down, big and little. Have your child help you plan and discuss daily activities. For example, have him or her make a shopping list for the grocery store. Ask his or her opinion. What do you think your cousin would like for his birthday? What kind of fruit do you think we need to buy at the store? These are just a few ideas of fun activities you can do at home to enhance your child's overall language. These fun activities will also help your child be ready to follow directions in the kindergarten classroom and to understand more complex vocabulary that they will encounter in stories and in school. Reading aloud to children has been called the single most important activity for building the knowledge required for success in reading. Reading aloud with children participating actively helps children learn new words, learn more about the world, and learn about written language. By reading aloud, we strive to make reading a pleasure. Read to your child in a comfortable place. Have her sit on your lap or next to you so that she can see and point to the print and the pictures. Show her how to hold the book and how to turn the pages one at a time. Talk to your child about the parts of the book, showing the front and back of the book. Notice how books have words and pictures to help tell the story. Point out how you read words and look at pictures. Introduce the book by reading the title and the author. Show her that reading is fun and rewarding. Show enthusiasm as you read with your child. Read the story with expression. Make it more interesting by talking as the characters would talk, making sound effects and making expressions with your face and hands. When children enjoy being read to, they will grow to love books and be eager to learn to read them. When children find out that reading with a loving adult can be a pleasurable experience, they begin to build a lifelong love of reading. Create background knowledge and build vocabulary. Vocabulary and knowledge of the world are very closely tied together. Children who know something about the world are much better able to understand what they read about in school. Reading aloud helps children learn specific things about the world. There are objects, places, events, and situations that they have not heard about before. When you do something together, eating, shopping, taking a walk, visiting a relative, talk about it. Take your child to new places and introduce him to new experiences. Discuss new, interesting, and unusual things that you see and do. Choose stories with rich language and vocabulary. Check for understanding by asking questions or by having your child make predictions and explain why they think that is what will happen. Have conversations about the book and the characters and how it relates to your lives. Point to the pictures and talk about what's happening in them. Ask about favorite parts. Answer his questions about characters or events and what the character learns in the story. Children often enjoy retelling the story with simple puppets or stuffed animals. Read predictable books. Your child will begin to recognize the repeated words and phrases and have fun saying them with you. Read poetry and other rhyming books to your child. When reading a familiar rhyme, stop before a rhyming word and ask your child to provide the word. Read a lot of different kinds of books and teach your child the meaning of new words. Make reading together a priority. Read to your child often. Set aside special times for reading each day, maybe after lunch and at bedtime. The more you can read to him, the better. Reading times can be brief, starting with about five to 10 minutes and building to longer times. Read favorite books again and again. 
Your child will probably ask you to read favorite books many times. You might get tired of reading the same books, but children love hearing the same stories again. And it helps them to learn to read by hearing familiar words and seeing what they look like in print. Build a library for your child. Look for books at bookstores, garage sales, or sales at the library. Create special places to keep books in various places around your home. Remember to keep it simple and fun. Make these activities a part of the warm, loving relationship you are already creating with your child. Some things that you can do to help your child learn outside of school are read to your child 15 minutes every day. Look for opportunities in everyday places to build your child's vocabulary. Ask your child to retell a story in his or her own words by telling what happened first, second, and third. And be sure your child has a library card. Children should select books in which they are interested to develop a passion for reading. Many libraries have book clubs and family activities that make reading fun for the entire family. There are two predictors of early reading success. One predictor is alphabet recognition, which includes knowing the names and sounds of letters. Another predictor is phonemic awareness, which is the understanding that a word is made up of sounds and the ability to manipulate sounds in words. There are easy, fun, yet important activities to strengthen these skills that you can do with your child at home to prepare your son or daughter for learning to read. Children most often start by singing the alphabet song. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. After your child can accurately sing the ABC song, it's time to begin saying the alphabet. H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Learning to say the alphabet is not the same as knowing the letters. In order to learn to read, children must be able to identify the printed forms of letters and a sound each letter makes. Giving your child lots of practice and repetition with letters will help to secure their instant recognition. Using magnetic letters is a fun and engaging way for your child to begin to work with letters. One activity is to put the letters in order as you and your child say the alphabet. Then help your child to practice one-to-one -one correspondence by touching one letter for each letter named. Your child can learn to distinguish letters through sorting activities. For example, letters can be sorted by uppercase and lowercase letters, tall and short letters, letters with tails and no tails, letters with curves and no curves. If you have a set of uppercase letters and a set of lowercase letters, you can help your child match them. And have your child use magnetic letters to spell his or her name using uppercase and lowercase letters. As your child begins to recognize some letters, he or she will have an easier time learning the sound associated with letters. Practice the first sound of your child's name or names of brothers and sisters or friends. You might say, Maisie starts with M. M says mmm, like Maisie. Likewise, names of restaurants and even display signs at the grocery store provide more great ways to practice the sound associated with the first letter of a word. Start with letters your child knows and add a few more at a time. A second predictor of early reading success is phonemic awareness, which is the understanding that a word is made up of individual sounds like k, a, t, makes cat. Phonological awareness involves a broader understanding of larger units of sounds, such as recognizing and using rhymes, counting words and sentences, and breaking words into syllables. Following are some activities you can do together to prepare for the phonemic awareness work your child will do in kindergarten. These activities focus on oral language. There are no letters involved in these activities. Walk and talk is one activity you can do with your child to help build his or her understanding of words within sentences. Using sentences with short, one-syllable words, such as I have a cat, you and your child can take a giant step for each word in the sentence, saying one word with each step. 
Rhyming is also an important skill to build in early readers. Saying nursery rhymes together like Humpty Dumpty and reading rhyming books are the easiest ways to help your child with this skill. First, read a rhyming book just to enjoy it. Next time you read it, stop during your reading and ask which words rhyme or sound the same at the end of the word. Finally, when you read the book again, pause at the second word of the rhyming pair and let your child fill in the word that rhymes. I hope you take time to practice some of these letter activities and play with sounds together. Most of all, make it fun and enjoy your child's journey into early literacy. In kindergarten, your child will be introduced to the world of writing. It's a special time in your child's life when they will be sharing their ideas and learning about the world through drawing, labeling, and writing. Therefore, before entering kindergarten, children should be encouraged to draw and write at home. In order to do this, they will need time and resources. To begin, introduce your child to fine motor activities. These activities will help to strengthen your child's hand muscles, as well as build their hand and eye coordination. These activities include Play-Doh, puzzles, beads, Legos, and shaving cream. Knowing the correct way to hold a pencil is also beneficial for your child. Whether your child is right or left-handed, rest the pencil between their thumb and index finger and then have them pinch it. If this is difficult for your child, have them practice with either a fat marker or a short golf size pencil. This will eliminate the uncertainty of where to hold the pencil. Cutting is also an important skill that your child will need to know. Before entering kindergarten, provide them with child-sized scissors. Have your child put their thumb on the top hole and their next two fingers in the bottom hole. Encourage your child to keep their thumbs up while cutting. In kindergarten, your child will be learning the proper formation of letters. All letters are made with basic strokes which are curved, straight, and slanted lines. Practicing these strokes will later help your child with letter formation. After writing the lines, encourage your child to cut out their lines to reinforce their cutting skills. Also, have your child practice writing their name. Encourage your child to write with both uppercase and lowercase letters. Start by having your child trace their name and then gradually release the responsibility to writing their name independently. To encourage writing and drawing at home, allow writing tools such as papers, markers, crayons, and scissors to be accessible to your child. As a family, create shopping lists or have your child write a thank you card to someone. Create a family journal in which your child draws special memories that your family shares. And then write down their ideas for them. This way, your child can observe the connection between spoken and written language. Spend time learning how to draw people, places, and animals around them. Most importantly, enjoy this time with your child. In kindergarten, your child will focus primarily on three important areas. The first is learning numbers and what numbers represent. The second is addition and subtraction. And the third is learning to identify and work with shapes. Activities in these areas include counting how many objects are in a group and comparing the quantities of two groups of objects. Each object to be counted must be touched or included exactly once as the numbers are said. The objects in the collection can be touched in any order and the starting point and the order in which the objects are counted does not affect how many there are. The last number said tells how many in the whole collection and does not describe the last object touched. Comparing two numbers to identify which is greater or less than the other. This collection of seven toy cars is greater than the collection of five crayons or this collection of four red blocks is less than the collection of six green blocks. Understanding addition as putting together and subtraction as taking away from. For example, if I put two dolls with your three dolls, we would have five dolls altogether. Or, if I had three cookies and I gave one of them to you, I would only have two cookies. Adding and subtracting very small numbers quickly and accurately. Breaking up numbers less than or equal to 10 in more than one way. For example, 7 is equal to 4 plus 3. 7 is also equal to 6 plus 1. Or 3 plus 3 plus 1 equals 7. For any number from 1 to 9, 
finding the missing quantity that is needed to reach 10. For example, if I have six counters, how many more do I need to make 10? Or if I have three counters, how many more do I need to make 10? Your child will learn to find the partners that make 10 for any number. From there, students learn to think of 10 as a unit and to break all the teen numbers down to a 10 and some leftover ones. 14 is made up of one 10 and four ones. Students will engage in activities where they will be representing addition and subtraction word problems using objects or by drawing pictures. They will also describe their physical world using geometric ideas such as shape, orientation, and spatial relationships. For example, they may describe a situation where a cube is under the table or the triangle is inside the square. There are things that you can do to help your child learn outside of school. Use everyday objects to allow your child to count and group a collection of objects. Encourage your child to construct numbers in multiple ways. For example, what are some ways that you can make five? Answers might include three plus two, four plus one, five plus zero, two plus two plus one. Have your child explain his or her thinking. Have your child create story problems to represent addition and subtraction of small numbers. For example, Anne had five balloons, then she gave three away, so she only had two left. Encourage your child to stick with it whenever a problem seems difficult. This will help your child see that everyone can learn math. And praise your child when he or she makes an effort and share in the excitement when he or she solves a problem or understands something for the first time. Every parent wants the best educational experience for their child, and the vast majority of children will be successful in kindergarten and beyond. But as we know, children are all different, and they enter kindergarten with varying skill levels. Children's styles of learning and rate of learning also differ. Your child's kindergarten teacher will discuss concerns with you if warranted. Parents should be assured that there is assistance within the public school for those students who require support. SRBI, or Scientific Research-Based Intervention, is utilized throughout the district to address academic and behavioral concerns. Some students may receive supplemental instruction in core academic subjects. Some children may have a behavioral plan. For other children, strategies implemented in the classroom are sufficient to meet the needs of the child. However, there are children who require more intensive, individualized, specialized instruction. These children will need to be evaluated and deemed eligible for special education based on established criteria. An IEP, or Individual Education Plan, would be developed and implemented. You, as the parent, would be involved in the process from the start. Special education can be provided in a multitude of ways and depends on individual needs. In the event that your son or daughter does qualify, all of the elementary schools have special education teachers speech and language therapists, school psychologists, and occupational and physical therapists. For more information, please contact your child's teacher, the building principal, or the special education service department. Hello, I am the proud superintendent of the Ellington Public Schools, Scott Nickel. There is an old Chinese proverb that states, tell me, and I forget, show me, and I remember, involve me, and I understand. We at the Ellington Public Schools value parental involvement, especially in early childhood education. A child entering kindergarten has the opportunity to spend seven years, grades kindergarten through six, at either Crystal Lake, Windermere, or Center schools. This is an outstanding opportunity. During this time, we parents and educators will grow together with your child. Please know that we are all in partnership together and will offer your child a wide range of educational experiences to ensure a positive beginning to their Ellington Public Schools K-12 education. Thank you.